Welcome to Next Tech. Which is your favorite mobile phone? Are you an iOS fan or do you much prefer an Android? Well, whatever you like, there are so many options for you to choose from when it comes to smartphones across the globe. The smartphones industry has grown and evolved by leaps and bounds in the past few decades. But did you know that there have been a few devices in the history of mobile phones that have proved to be catastrophic? Yes, we are not kidding. Many companies in the world have seen massive losses just because an idea or a device did not live up to the desire of either the audience or the makers. Or some were just poor ideas, poor designs, and even poorer execution. Some companies lost millions of dollars, while some lost huge customer bases. Some got their highest management booked for fraud just because of one failed gadget. In this video, we are taking a look at some of the worst phone failures in the history of the world. Make sure to watch this video till the end to see how one company tried selling a phone at prices equal to a small meal but ended up falling flat on their faces. The first one we're talking about is the Amazon Fire Phone. Launched in 2011, the phone was being released by one of the largest tech companies on earth, so the expectations were quite high on this one. Another main attraction about it was that even though this phone was quite aggressively priced and had very simple software, it was still the only competitor to iOS at that time. This was a new addition in a very recently introduced Android operating system, and the only one that was said to be a potential threat to the market leader at the time, the iPhone. To add to the anticipation, Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos was very deeply involved in the production of this gadget and hence people were looking forward to it, no doubt. When it was launched, they called it the Amazon Fire Phone, which retailed at a whopping $650 US dollars, which was almost the same as any other flagship iPhone and Android phones present then. But unlike the launch that went very well, which was not a surprise considering it was organized by Amazon, the phone actually did not fare that well once it reached the masses. Some of the main problems that people reported were the phone had no features to run the Google Store apps available at the moment, while any personalized Android apps did not yet exist. This made customization and usefulness very limited right at the kickoff. Apart from that, the software was very unrefined, with too many bugs. The battery life was unsatisfactory, and the phone had an overall sluggish performance, far inferior than the iPhone or the most popular Android phones back then. The only feature that made this phone slightly cool was the fact that it had five front-facing cameras which were used to track your head and give you contextual 3D effects. This allowed the display to look like things were popping out from the screen. Another cool feature was that on the press of a button, the phone could identify things from the real world and instantly place an order on Amazon to get the items delivered to you. But while these features were cool and unique to the Amazon Fire, they were not enough to compensate for all the drawbacks it had which made the phone essentially useless, hence was unable to gain even a fraction of the desired or predicted customer base. In about just three months, Amazon finally had to agree that this was a disaster and admit that they were going to have a loss of over $170 million on the project. Amazon Fire was definitely ambitious with its exploration, though not fully into the realm of future technologies like 4D or augmented reality, but it was a poor execution to say the least. The second addition to this list is the Telson TWC 1150, launched in 2004. This was the epic smartwatch that a Korean firm called Telson wanted to launch which aimed at bringing a futuristic turn to the world of smartphones and gadgets. But it backfired. And how? Not only did the design look ridiculous to the most people who saw it, but the call taking feature was just absurd. You actually had to hold your wrist up to your ears and talk into it when taking a call, which honestly would have looked and felt really stupid to say the least. The next phone we have in the list of the worst failures ever is the widely unknown Nokia Engage phone. The idea was to build a phone that also doubled as a handheld game console. One look at the design and you could definitely see hints of the age old gaming consoles that we used to play Pac-Man on back in the day. So everyone was definitely excited for this one. After all, this was the beginning of making your phone everything you wanted to be carrying around, including entertainment at any point in time, no matter where you were. All while the production was going on and rumors were going around, the idea and design seemed foolproof. Nothing could apparently go wrong, but then as the release day came, it did. As soon as people started buying the handset and using it, they realized this was neither a good gaming console nor a good phone. Gaming was hard and cumbersome on this one, with clunky controls and just uncomfortable gaming experience. On the other hand, it made for a very, very awkward phone. The buttons, placements were all messed up, and it did not give you the ease of use that you'd want with a smartphone. 
All of these reasons combined meant that not many people were interested to buy this. The sales suffered, and eventually Nokia was caught lying about the numbers when they claimed that about 400,000 units were sold in the first two weeks, while the real number of units sold stood at a very low 6,000. Lack of interest in sales eventually forced the company to discontinue the Nokia Engage in 2005, only two years after its launch in 2003. Moving one, we have the Kyocera Echo. In 2011, a Japanese firm named Kyocera decided that they wanted to release a phone, but not just another addition to the Android pool of choices. They wanted to go in a different route that would stand out in the crowd. So they decided to take a risk with their smartphone and came up with the idea of putting two screens in one phone. The Echo thus basically had a secondary 3.5 inch screen exactly equal in size to the first one. The screen was movable at the hinge. You just flipped it outwards to make the phone double screen. What was the use, you ask? Well, it allowed users to select two of the seven apps available on the phone to run at the same time on different screens. Another option was just to stretch out the one app and spread it across both displays to make it one bigger display. Taking a look at the phone, the execution felt pretty darn close to the idea. But the problem was not the hardware. Rather, it was the lack of technological advancement to support this theory. Since the software could not support and run the double screen apps correctly, all the users that bought the phone ended up experiencing slow and sluggish performance, too bulky of the hardware, as well as the fact that there was a large seam visible in the middle of the app. Overall, the phone did not work and was soon discontinued. The next one we are talking about is literally the cheapest smartphone you would ever see in your life, both by price and by make. How? Well, let me explain. There was a time when a company in India called Ringing Bells wanted to do it when they announced that they would be releasing a handset called Freedom 251. The name had the number 251 because yes, you guessed it right, the phone was to be sold for 251 rupees, or just under 4 US dollars. The phone was launched in 2016, the same year when it was ranked as the number one searched Android phone in the world. The news was shocking to the people of the country, especially the poorer ones who could not afford the more expensive smartphones that retailed at least a few 10,000 rupees at that time. This fact came in handy to ringing bells, earning them millions of $4 pre-orders from curious countrymen. But of course, building so many smartphones at a cheap price was not going to be profitable yet, right? So the company asked for help from the Indian government, asking them for financial support of about 7.4 billion US dollars. This, however, was not possible for the government at the time since they were already spending a lot on yet another program to digitize India and bring technology and digitization to the people who had no access to it due to either financial, social, cultural, or geographical restrictions. So the government obviously refused. However, all this time, Ringing Bells was trying to fulfill the pre-orders, yet losing $13 per unit in production. They had planned to use advertising and in-app deals to make up for the cost, but even then, they were in a loss per unit. Still, the company decided to get production complete and launch the phone. But the day of the launch proved to be a catastrophic one as well. The reality of the Freedom 251 was immediately ousted, when the journalists were given sample devices to check out and spread the word. But they noticed that the handset was supposed to be made in India was actually an existing cheap gadget from China manufactured by the brand Adcom. Ringing Bells had actually just used white markups to cover the Adcom branding. The truth came out and India's telecom ministry was immediately involved to look into the matter. The man leading the project was also arrested for fraud. And all the people who placed the $4 pre-orders, well, they were disappointed to say the least. This brings us to the end of the video. Hope you liked it. Which one do you think was the worst of them all? Have you heard any stories about smartphone failures? If you have, do share them with us in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video too, and share it with your friends. Also, press the bell icon to get notified every time we drop a new video. Until then, make sure to check out our other videos on the channel. See ya!